I've been talking to Education Minister Dr. Yawase Edichum on uh, his vision for the Education Ministry and Ghana's recovery plan post-COVID-19, especially in the education sector. First week, how has it been for you? Our first week has been great, uh, but it feels different because I was at the same ministry as Deputy Minister and I step in as the Minister for Education and uh, the sense of our responsibility is greater, but also uh, it also comes with a greater opportunity that I have to implement okay. the vision of the President. Talking about the vision, what is your vision and how does it sit, especially within the details that the president gave us at the state of the nation address when it comes to education you see the president has set a very bold agenda um, the idea that we have to have more of our youth graduate from universities colleges of education nursing training institutions and be able to become competitive like other countries you see there's this talk about gross tertiary and roman ratio that he mentioned in, in essentially what he's saying is that we want the critical mass of our youth uh, to be prepared at the tertiary education level uh, so that they can contribute to the socioeconomic transformation of the country. Okay. And that destination is moving us for our tertiary education enrollment from 18.8 percent to 40 percent by 2030. What are the key steps briefly that you want to you want to take in achieving this uh, first of all, I'm going to be meeting with uh, universities from the vice chancellors to the critical uh, people who are involved in student admissions to begin to really look at what our action plan should look like okay. in order to get us to the destination that the president wants us to get to. Okay. Uh, the idea of an open university that the president mentioned will also give a further boost uh, to the enrollment numbers. But the president also spoke about relevant our tertiary education. That brings us to a very critical juncture where we need to boost enrollment in the STEM-related fields. It has always been part of our education sector strategic plan. Uh, but we are now looking at how do we ensure that this is done? How do we support the universities? How do we create grant programs that will enable the universities to get the extra funding that they need to set up engineering schools and other science re in, or other science related programs so i think it's an opportunity for uh, as the minister to dialogue with the vice chancellors and the rectors and other heads of various tertiary institutions to begin to look at the way forward what is the infrastructural plan and what are the timelines um the, let me begin with the science schools which is going to be operationalized as stem schools the one at abomosu awasu and all these beautiful uh, edifices that are being created. It's going to be a place where uh, we nurture the future generation of scientists and, and, and also not to overlook the fact that the best scientist is the one who has done music and understand music and appreciate music. So, so it's not going to be the wasi driven uh, high school system where you do biology, chemistry, physics, elective mathematics and four core subjects and you are done and you are ready for the university. We're going to engage the universities in terms of how we prepare the future generation of Ghanaians uh, to really take the helms of affairs of the country and compete globally. Our students should be well-rounded. Well, so, what yes, timelines are we looking at in terms of uh, operationalizing these schools? Um, by July, some of the schools will have been completed in terms of the construction and the headmasters will be recruited so that they then can begin to prepare their schools to open in January 2022. Okay. So the goal is that we are using international best practices in ensuring that each one of these schools has a science lab that it needs. Every new school that we are building has 12 science laboratories. So how many schools are we building, about, first of all? About the 10 that I'm talking about. Okay. So 10, mm -hmm. well, I, I just wanted to get it from you. 10 schools, ultra-modern mm -hmm. STEM schools, schools being built mm -hmm. and the timelines uh, between now and next year. Mm -hmm. Between now and next year. And then year. we have the STEM centers, 20 of them that oh. the president mentioned. Mm -hmm. About 10 are nearing completion. And the idea here was to create a STEM center that will expose the children to robotics and all aspects of STEM. Okay. Uh, what we are going to look, do now is to create what is called a school within a school. So you create, create an academy 
So we may have about 100 of the students who are part of the STEM pathway, and, and they are doing their robotics and all the things that is done in STEM around the world. They are STEM so would they be schools. separated from the usual general arts science yes. students? But yes. they, are, they are separated, mm -hmm. but they are within the same they institution. They are within the same schools. They are doing biology, chemistry, and physics, but they are also doing one year of music, one year of visual arts. Okay. And, and you are creating the system in such a way that individuals that go through that are poised for tertiary education and the world of work okay. in, in a way that is unusual of our current structure where you just have uh, our students doing biology, chemistry and physics, mm -hmm. no robotics, mm -hmm. and if they are doing that, they are doing that on their own and it's not examinable. Yeah. So things are going to shift in okay. that area based on the education strategic plan that has been approved, okay. our 2018 2030 education strategic plan, the vision of the president as it was espoused um, and, and well articulated during the State of the Nation address. Uh, can we wrap up this part of the conversation with access to free internet, something that the President mentioned mm -hmm. as well. Where mm -hmm. are we with that one? Um, high schools are being provisioned or have been provisioned. A number of them have free internet now. Okay, or how many do we have an idea? Country. I think it's um, in the various regions I think Ashanti have about 50% of their schools done, but all other high schools uh, have the internet connectivity and they are going to go on to uh, make sure they provision it for all the other senior high schools. It's, okay. it's something that needs to be done and it's been done. Well, your, 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 let me take your assessment of the SHS placements going on so far. You haven't heard the noise. <laughs> you know what happened last year. This year, by the grace of God, um, it has not become a big news. Apart from the, the solution or the call centers mm -hmm. that you created, mm -hmm. what else did we do differently, you think? I think we, we had to look at how the technology, the, the, the network and the service were working. Uh, we uh, look at the fact that if we put everything on one server, you can have a crisis. And because the, you, you know you have two portals. The portal where a parent goes and check whether his or her child has been accepted. Then, if they don't have a school, they have to go to the self-placement portal. And so the system will transfer you to the self-placement portal. This year, we felt strongly that these two systems should not sit on the same server. Okay. So the moment you are transferred to the self-placement portal, it takes you to a different server altogether. I see. So in terms of the technology, the infrastructure that was built, and then I, I had to call on my brother, um, Anochi, uh, from NCA. Uh, he's a network guru. Mm -hmm. So he also came in, evaluated the system. We did what is called a test plan. So it was a checklist okay. that the developers should go through to make sure the system will work according to what they have developed. Okay. So after they did the test plan, the checklist, everything went well. So when we rolled it out, we had taken care of the technology side of things. And then the Ghana Education Service did a fantastic job with uh, Dr. Pukwa Mankwa and uh, Cassandra uh, Party. They came together and they were able to set up the call centers. And, and then when we saw that some parents needed the face-to-face -face interaction, they also created an app hall. And not, they just didn't create a place in such a way that you just go there and complain or give your forms. But the solution providers were also situated there. And let's move on and talk about teacher development. Again, back to the State of the Nation address. According to President Kufado, we're procuring some 280,000 laptops. Tell us a bit more about this program. I, um, this arrangement was, of course, done by my predecessor. And uh, worked with the unions and came to the understanding that uh, uh, they can come together and do uh, provide that support, critical support, 21st century. Uh, it's important that teachers get the 21st century tools that can facilitate their work. Is it sustainable? Uh, um, let me tell you, um, one thing about education is that uh, it's expensive. And you have to really ensure that what we are asking teachers to do, you have equipped them to do it. Mm. So let's say within five years or four years, uh, you have to replace some of them, you have to. 21st century education is expensive. How much are but we they, committed they, to this? Um, I know it's 280,000. Yeah, uh, 280,000 uh, laptops. Laptops, yeah. 
I'll, I'll have to check on the pricing. Okay. 280,000. You see, the thing is this, in technology adoption, one of the things that you always have to ask yourself is that it's not just the price, but what am I saving? You see, there are handbooks that you have to print for teachers mm. when you're adopting new curricula, and it costs you a lot of money. The moment they have laptops and you can send the files uh, to them, they can download it from website, you save some money right there. And, and of course, you're also saving the environment in terms of things that they, they will have to print. You uh, equip them with internet in the various schools and you have given them opportunity to do a whole lot of things online. Uh, first, it makes them more efficient, but it's also saved them uh, the cost of buying paper and, and printing a whole lot of documents. So invariably, we tend to look at the cost, but the savings is also equally important. Okay, I'm sure after this interview, we'll be able to get the, the amount, amount that we're, we're definitely, committing to definitely. this so that we can do, since you love master loss, we can do the calculation <laughs> and see yeah. how much we're saving and how yes. much we're investing yes, yes, at, the, yes. at the end of the day. Definitely. The president also mentioned that you are going to provide some details to Ghanaians on the action plan for implementation of the national teacher policy. What is this national teacher policy? You see, the national policy uh, on teaching or national teacher policy mm. spells out what you do in the teaching space from training to where you have to recruit to induction of teachers, equipping them professional development, issues about their welfare. Everything is part of the national teacher policy. And this was championed by the NTC, National Teaching Council. Okay. So uh, what we have to now do, and, and they engage the unions, engage various stakeholders, but we now have to begin to look at the action plan. Uh, we're talking about professional learning communities in the various schools where teachers come together and they are able to learn together. But you cannot do professional learning communities if you don't set aside days for professional development. You see, in other jurisdictions, you have 10 days uh, during that calendar, the school calendar or the academic year where teachers meet. Students don't come to school on those days. Okay. If you don't create that opportunity for teachers, you cannot create a professional learning community. Our teachers in this country have had invariably to pay for their own professional development. You know, they have a training during the vacation, they go and they pay for themselves. Mm -hmm. Now we are saying that that is not how you develop the teaching workforce of the 21st century. You need to give them time. Give them the professional that will go to their various schools and do training with them. And uh, Ghana Education Center have started with the primary schools. Uh, last year, they set aside four days in the whole year. I don't think that is enough. Four days for the teachers alone? Teachers alone. So it's called, it's in another jurisdiction, called people free days. I see. People free days are the days that students don't come to school. So, this, so this, these are supposed to be school days? School days. So what you do is that you look at the number of school days, you may add a few to, uh, days to it, or sometimes in the interest of equipping teachers, what you do is that you deduct some days, you may add a few days at the end, or you do what is called minimum days. Why not holi Min uh, holidays or weekends? No, you don't want to put pressure on. Teachers struggle to accommodate our children. Teaching is the only job that you, you, you sometimes even dream about the work you need to do the next day. So, you see, if you do it during the holidays, the downside to it is that they are not immediately taken into the classroom. So, for example, if there was a people free day on Wednesday, teachers meet, they look at the data on student performance. They look at sample student work and compare notes among themselves. The next day, they are implementing the best practices in their classroom. So people free days are always uh, 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 done in such a way that it gives the teachers uh, instant feedback on their work and how you can take it to the classroom. So it's not uh, done when teachers are on vacation. That sounds like special holidays for the student, is it? Is that something, the is that what we're doing? The focus is on the teacher. But, but it means that if I have, have my children be, in school, mm -hmm that there will be days within the week where they don't go to school? There will be days within the month. Within the month, yeah, so yes. Yeah, I mean one day in within the month. the month when teachers have to meet and sharpen their skills so that they can better serve your child. So it's something that we need to do. When are we starting this? Uh, they've already started. In, in, GS have started. That's why I said they started oh, four days oh, in okay. a year. 
and then the high schools will have to do something similar. Okay. The teachers have to be equipped, and if we can't ask them to do something that we don't provide them time to do. So that is something that needs to be done. That is how education is done around the world. Okay. Uh, where in systems where education have really uh, been promoted and they are on top of the world, professional development this has to be given to the teacher to sharpen their skills. I see. And this is the first time I'm hearing, um, I'm hearing about, about this. Apart from this, Doc, uh, as we wrap up on the action, uh, the action plan for the National Teacher mm -hmm. Policy, can you highlight for us the key new things that we are introducing into mm -hmm. our education system mm -hmm. as far as, the, or that is captured in the National Teacher Policy? Just the highlights so people about can the take recruitment of. Of Yeah. Teachers, for okay. Talk about professional development, which is key. Mm. Um, uh, issues about promotion, it's all well spelled out in there. And, and then, uh, in terms of teachers, some of them opting to become administrators, and others opting to be in the classroom. Uh, the, 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 the general perception is that every teacher wants to be a headmaster. There are some teachers who want to be master teachers in their classrooms and do well. So okay. they have to be given that opportunity to, after teaching for some certain number of years, to say, I want to be an administrator. And then if you want to be an administrator, mm -hmm. then there should be training made available to you okay. so that you can be an administrator in the 21st century. If you want to be a master teacher, training opportunities should also be given to you so that when the new ones come on board, you'll be able to support them. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll be able to mentor and guide them. So part of the comprehensive teacher policy is also looking at that space to really okay. bring us in conformity uh, with our 21st century education, especially when you look at the father in other jurisdictions. You don't have to be a teacher for 20 years before you become a headmaster. Um, we lose talent that way. Uh, the best leaders who come into teaching are invariable leave after three, four years because they, they, they can't wait for 20 years. So these are areas that we want to um, look at and say that if we want to um, develop the next generation of school leaders, they shouldn't wait till five years to retirement, two years to retirement. Typically, five years to retirement, then, then they get opportunities to become a headmaster. They, at that point, what do they have to prove? Young and dynamic teachers with leadership potentials after teaching for three, four years should be given the opportunity to prepare to lead our schools. Okay. And they have everything to prove <laughs> because they know that if they mess up, they've messed up their career. So they go in there, they want their schools to be in the, the best in the world. So these are part of the new set of ideas mm -hmm. that uh, we are going to work on. And, and the comprehensive, the teacher policy, uh, stakeholders and, and people who champion the Look at all these issues. The, the, talking about teacher uh, um, development, the new teacher curriculum that we, we started, I think, last, last year, um, there were times when some of the teachers uh, had issues about where they were lodging, etc. What is the update on the program itself? Oh, you mean the new curriculum? The new curriculum yeah, training. Yeah, for students. For the, right. uh, yeah, I think that, they, that they, we knew that the teachers <laughs> were being trained to be able to implement the curriculum. Yeah, they, of course. The pandemic came. <laughs> you have to press the reset button right. on a number of things. So we have to then go back and okay. see um, how you retool and okay. re-engineer the whole thing because mm. our pandemic changes a whole lot of things. But okay. Now that we are back in school, um, GES is now presenting a plan to pick up the pieces from where we left okay. off and see how we move forward. Okay. Let's talk about COVID and mm. and, and our schools. Um, the, there were there were some amounts you know dedicated to supporting mm -hmm. um schools especially the private schools how many of these schools i mean where are we with that process and how many of these schools have benefited from every that school funding? has benefited every private school. every private school has benefited in terms of ppe distribution the government never discriminated and said hey if you are public we are bringing you the items if you are private no every one of them if there's a school that has not benefited them I'm never ready to look at how we can support them, but I know, based on what I've been briefed on by the Ghana Education Service, every school has benefited and they have items. What we about the them. relief loans, the loans that were supposed to support businesses? And I mean, these private schools, mm -hmm. they're, they're mm -hmm. doing businesses. Some of them were... 
Wait, what that's why I, I, you may want to talk to MBSSI because okay. I know for a fact that some of them even call me to say, hey, I've gotten something. But if you talk to them, um, uh, okay. Kosi, a very dynamic young woman, she'll be able to okay. get you information on that. What about the, what is our recovery plan in, in terms of the impacts that COVID has had on the education mm -hmm. sector? Mm -hmm. Teachers, some mm -hmm. teachers have lost mm -hmm. their jobs. Mm -hmm. I mean, our systems have really suffered. Mm -hmm. to walk mm -hmm. us through the, the plan mm -hmm. towards recovery. Uh, the, the point is that we are at a point where you really have to appreciate the fact that COVID-19 and education have become strange bedfellows. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we ha they have to coexist. And in the midst of that, uh, you have to begin to look at what is called learning loss. Uh, before COVID-19, the World Bank has something that they call learning poverty. And they said in developing countries, 53% of your 10 years cannot read for understanding. Hmm. And now they are saying it's become worse for certain countries because they stayed at home for one year. And, and the learning poverty rate in some countries is about 90%. I see if you don't get to the root of the problem, you cannot attack it and you cannot uh, really solve the problem. So this year we are starting a national standards assessment. It's a national agency like BEC for all fourth graders across the country. Every fourth grader in Ghana will take a BECE-like exam, but in just English and mathematics. And that will give us the critical data to see where our students are and how we pick up the pieces and truly get them to recover from the learning loss. So we are aligning our assessment with the 10-year-old learning poverty measure uh, by the World Bank. So we'll be able to know where we are as a country. And we're also gearing up next year to go to, um, to do PISA, Program for International Student Assessment. This is assessment done by uh, developed countries and some developing countries. So you go in and you compare yourself to America and see how your students are doing. And if there's a huge gap, then you look at your curriculum and say, how do I address it? The test is focused more on critical thinking. So your students take the assessment, and you're able to have data back to you that tells you that your education system is competitive with the rest of the world, or you are not doing well. And we are aligning the, uh, the primary four assessment with the PISA. So we are able to know that if 20% of our students are not doing well, or only 20% are doing well, then we go to the PISA and see what is going on there. So we are benchmarking the Ghanaian education system against other education systems of the world. My goal as the Minister for Education is that we will compete. Because you see, the children of Ghana uh, are, are so well prepared <laughs> for the future uh, in terms of psychologically. Uh, when you enter a Ghanaian classroom, the level of respect for the teacher, for the adult, you don't find that in some developed countries. And I want to leverage that uh, uh, and fulfill the president's vision through that. We, our children are ready, as I always say. I think they are more ready than us sometimes. And our goal is to make sure that since they are ready, we also support them to serve. But we need to benchmark our education system against that of other countries that are doing so well. Look at the gap that exists and develop a comprehensive action plan okay. through intervention programs to really get us there. In terms of the, our adherence to the protocols, I mean, we're, we've started the vaccination, I've been vaccinated, and we're hoping to vaccinate as many people as will give us head immunity. Do we have a bigger plan when it comes to reintegrating and you know, getting back to normal? I mean, I can speak from education. Yeah. Uh, those big items that you are talking about is Minister of Health. Right. So they'll be able to talk to you more about the vaccination and what you're supposed to do. Mm. But what I know is that our frontliners who are our teachers are also going to get the opportunity uh, for the vaccination okay. in the not too distant future. Okay. And of course, if they happen to be in the priority group of uh, sister and above, they will get the opportunity. Uh, okay. What I can say is that I've been fortunate enough that under the leadership of the president, uh, protocols have been followed. Uh, the active cases in schools have dropped uh, significantly. Around the country, it's about um, 363 active cases, and a number of students have recovered. Um, so, Volta region has the largest number uh, of students. I think there were a few 
cases here and there. But for the most part, if you look at the national average, the schools are doing very well. Okay. And, and I'm excited that okay. we'll get to the point where we can coexist mm. and we'll be able to do well. Well, I'm almost at the end of my conversation with Dr. Ayawase Duchum, the Education Minister. First week in office, we're taking a look at the vision, what to expect, how do we measure his performance at the end of his, uh, his, his, his duty, if at all um, we, we get to do that. Um, Doc, before we wrap up, I just want to, to, to take a, um, some information on the public universities bill. What is the fate of the bill? Um, this is my third day on the job. I'm going to be meeting with the stakeholders in that space. Okay. And then we'll take it from there. Do you have any plans about it you want to share with us? I'm going to meet with them. I don't want to preempt to them. I, I know they have some opinions and I want to give them a listening ear. Okay. And then we'll take it from there. Talk to us also about the Ghana Jobs and Skills Project, mm -hmm. another thing that President Okufado mm -hmm. mentioned. Is it sitting within the Education Ministry Education or the Education and Law of Ministries. Uh, Education and a Law of Ministries. That's a small part of it. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, Labor Ministry, okay. Trade okay. and Industry, everybody is kind of SN tax sectorial. Okay, so where does, it, where, where does the Education Ministry come in? Education, the Tibet end of things. Right. That's where we sit. Okay. Is there any more information to share as far I as mean, that is concerned? Uh, the, the details of it, of course, will come from more than tax sectorial approach. Uh, of it, uh, which is headed by Prof. Okay. Asamoah, uh, they will be able to give you further details on it. I think, okay. as you rightly said, uh, this is just an introductory interview. Very well. <laughs> so Very well. Uh, I'm also, not going to a nitty gritty. Of <laughs> <laughs> I guess you don't. Uh, just tell us a little bit also about the 198 million extra classes that the president calls the academic intervention support program. It has been there for the last uh, three years. It began with the double track. Uh, as the, you bring in a huge number of students, you eliminate cutoff. You are bringing students who are 36 and uh, to senior high school. And invariably, they have needs. So the idea is to use the Wesley Girls model, where all first year students are given a placement exam. And when they give them the placement exam, it's not an exam that is supposed to decide whether they will come to West Lagos or not. They're already there. But they use the placement exam to look at the skill level of the students in English and mathematics and then prepare an intervention plan uh, for those students and support them. So the initiative by the president for the last three years has focused on that. A major part of it, of course, is preparing the final year students so that they can write their exams. Mm. But the second year students also have intervention courses uh, because you may have a student who came in and their proficiency level in mathematics is weak. You need to provide them support. Right. It used to be paid by parents called extra classes fee. But now, uh, it's, uh, with freeze near high school, the president mm. said he will take care of that so that so, uh, every student will get intervention and not those who can afford it. So we are co committing 198 million cities mm -hmm. to that one. We've also talked about infrastructure, which are going to pursue aggressively mm -hmm. between this and next year. Where is the money coming from? Uh, the infrastructure money is essentially coming from the get fund securitization that was approved by parliament, $1.5 billion uh, from get fund. And that is what has been used and that is what we we'll continue to use I am uh, part of an earmark for tertiary infrastructure, which we're going to be doing this year. Okay. Well, I, I, I'm looking at my list, and I just, I just want to be sure that I haven't, since I finally got well, you. have a checklist. <laughs> <laughs> my, my list uh, of, for, the, for the conversation um, that, that, we're, that we're having here, and I just want to be sure that I've exhausted um, everything else. But then there's this thing you mentioned right now about getting students prepared. President Ekufado mentioned that we've had about 50 to 60 percent of our students mm -hmm. passing the WASI, getting between A1 to A6. Mm -hmm. Is that something we should be proud of? Of course. I mean, you always have to situate the conversation and, and situate it within the context of where you have, <laughs> you have, where you have been. Uh, we have been getting 30 percent pass in mathematics. And once you get that pass, and in this case, we are not we are not counting D7. So even though YX say D7 is a pass, the universities say it's A1 to C6. Mm -hmm. So when the in mathematics only 35 percent are passing, it means not more than 35 percent of your students can go to the university because that becomes the barrier. Mm -hmm. Because if you did not pass mathematics, you are not going. 
So the mathematics figures or English, whichever one is lower, determines the percentage of students. It doesn't matter what you've got in your home economics. It doesn't really matter because the mathematics will then block you. Mm -hmm. So the moment you're able to lift the English and mathematics and social and science figures to over 50%, you have guaranteed access to 50% of your students for tertiary. But it used to be 30. Mm. So that is what the president was talking about. Okay. Of course, I'm not satisfied with 50%. I think we can do What's 70%. What's your target? 70%. I, can, I think we can do 70% A1 to C6. But in the meantime, when you get 50, when you've been at 30, you should be excited. Congratulate the teachers. Congratulate the students. Build a self-efficacy for us to know that better things can happen. So that is what the president was uh, talking about. I like that you mentioned teachers. One of the things we've seen in this country is a lot of industrial action when it comes to our teachers, when they are not happy about something. What is your plan to deal with that part of um, the dynamic? I'm a teacher at the core. Done it for years. So I understand. I understand how teachers feel. Teaching is a difficult job. You're dealing with 20 children in your class. It's not even easy, but some people are dealing with 40, 50 children. And if you're a, a high school teacher, you have four classes or five classes or 50 each. You have 200 children who you see every day, and you have to make sure that you meet their needs. It's not an easy task. And I think the first thing that I, I, I'll do and I'll continue to do is to give ears to their needs and their issues. Uh, so that I understand where they are and what the issues are. If a teacher has been promoted and the promotion has not been infected so that they can get their increase, uh, it's not acceptable in the 21st century. I believe there should be a portal where you can log in and log into the portal in a, and check on those issues that affect you. And I want a dashboard. We are creating a dashboard that will link up with that portal so that as the minister, I'll be able to know percentage of teachers whose promotion has not been affected and there will be an action plan to make sure it happens okay. in a timely fashion. You know why I'm concerned about? My concern is that you're going to pay the money anyway but you get the person so disappointed and they are not giving their best to you and then after two years you pay the money anyway. <laughs> so to me it doesn't really make sense. Yes, no, that no, I'd no, rather no. make you happy today so that you can give me more. Okay. So that is why I'm very concerned about teachers who get hired and we don't pay them and some of them may not even go to school uh, because they don't have money for transportation. Then you turn around to pay them after one year. And when you do that, what has happened to you that you've lost productivity, but you've paid for it. Okay. So we're going to do everything to make sure that we eliminate this problem, whether it's arrears or whether late promotions, we're going to have to stop it. Okay. Thank you. Well, Doc, that's it for me. Uh, is there anything else you'd want to, uh, you know, say uh, or I, I, add anything I, I we know, haven't touched on? I know your job is to get me to talk. <laughs> oh, not, not necessarily. But, my but, job but, is to but, get Ghanaians to hear that, you. This is my first interview. You know that? Mm. This is my first formal interview, and I, I've done it with your network uh, just to underscore that when I was a deputy minister, we had a very positive relationship, and I pray that it continues. And that any time that something needs to be said, um, you'll be here, other news outlets will be here. Uh, but I just want to tell Ghanaians that I'm very grateful to God and grateful to the president for this opportunity. But I'm very grateful to Ghanaians. Uh, sometimes it amazes me when I get phone calls and I hear them calling into shows talking about Dr. Duchum and uh, how we wish him well and we want him uh, to do a better job. So I want to take this. Uh, opportunity mm. uh, through your media outlet to thank all Ghanaians. People send messages say, we are praying with you, we are praying for you. And it really gladdens my heart because I never entered into politics thinking that the generality of Ghanaians will have that kind of affection for me. And I want them to know that I will not disappoint them. We're going to work hard uh, and, and make the vision of the president come through. So I thank, I thank you.